7.08, which is a minute and 24 seconds. So. Oh, thank you, Melissa, for recording. Uh, Anna, do you want to just give me a thumbs up if the thing we talked about is all set? Um, it's almost ready, not just yet. Okay, I'll give you, well, you have a minute and nine seconds until okay. 108, Ah, did we say the turning point ID, Anna? No, I'll put in the chat right now. Yes, okay, all USC members, Anna is putting the turning point ID in the chat. It's not the same as last week's, or is it? I think it might be actually. But regardless, um, please log into turning point as soon as you can. All right, but regardless, the time is 708 we will now call to order um and as we also and if you want to say what the turning is so everyone to head to turning point two just to log in so the code for today is august part two with the number two so august part two give you a second to do that Okay, excellent. So as this is the second, um, oh, okay, right. Forgot there's some new proxies here. So if you are a proxy and you don't remember from last week what's happening, basically you are voting on behalf of the person you're proxying for. And um, what you're going to wanna do is you can DM Anna in the chat your vote as well. You need to keep a record, uh, record of how you voted tonight. And after that, email that to me, Anna, and Melissa, if possible. So two parts if you're a proxy tonight. DM Anna your vote for every vote, as well keep record of your vote to send to us later. Sorry, Isabella. Um, I yes. don't think Anna is a co-host, so we can't direct message her. Anna is not a co-host. OK, then Slack, Anna, is that OK? or? That's good, yeah. Okay. Slack then. Okay, um, it looks like I have a few people saying session ID did not work. Is that everyone's experience or are there just a few people where session ID? Okay, Anna, session Anna, ID is not you, Could you just like uh, spell it out for people? Like the two, yeah. my letter two, number two, whatever. Yeah, so it's, I'll just say, so it's the word August, P-A-R-T, the number two. No capitals. No spaces. So August part two. All right, how are we looking, Anna? I have 27, so we might wanna wait a couple more minutes. Yes, we will do that. And for those that are joining in just today, this is the second part of a two-part meeting, so we're proceeding from where we left off, meaning that we're not approving the agenda as it has already happened, um, as well as no Canada or land acknowledgement as that has already happened technically in this meeting. And we're going to start off with the motion to approve exec reports, which is going to be a question period followed by a debate period. Um, uh, Councillor Mohan, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. So I guess it just dawned on me. Um, we have an approved agenda. 
So at what point would you recommend I uh, motion to amend the agenda, which I assume would require a two thirds majority? Okay, so we have actually already approved the agenda for this meeting. We did that last session. There are two sessions to this one meeting, meaning if you want to change the agenda, you want to add something at all today, it will have to go in new business. And you raise, when I say, is there any new business? At that point, you would raise your hand, propose what you would like to add to new business, um, and then you would need a two thirds majority. Understood, thank you. No worries. Uh, and as well, uh, for counselors, please keep Slack on hand as um, as this is a very open to the public meeting today. We're, we, we were thinking we'd have trouble keeping track of votes over Zoom, so we'll be uh, doing votes using Slack. So just keep that open for later. Some votes over Slack, but mostly over Turning Point. All right, and are we all set? You have 30 on turning point. That is quorum. So, nice. and we've, I think we've given it enough time. Um, so we are going to start then in the, that, this case with the exec reports. Um, we, okay, we can move on or we can start by reopening the question period. If anybody has any questions about the exec reports, um, now would be the time. All right, seeing as there are no questions, we will now move on to the debate period. Are there any points of debate for or against or amendments to be made to this motion? All right, seeing as there are no points of debate, we will now call to question. Everyone who is a counselor, head over to Turning Point and vote on this motion. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay, excellent. We, are, we can now move on to our second motion of the evening, which is revisiting the Gov and Finance Standing Committee motions, the first being the amendment to the working group policy. Are there any questions on this motion at the time? Does anybody want a refresher? But actually, no, we're just gonna go in order. Um, are there any, seeing as there are no questions, we will now move on to the debate period. Are there any points of debate, amendments for or against at this time for approving this motion or anything anyone would like to say at this time? All right, seeing as there is not, um, we can now call to question, head over back to turning point for this motion. Uh, do we have a seconder for the motion? Yeah, we got that last meeting. Thank you. So. I'm looking for six more votes. I think you're okay. Okay. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay. I'm sorry if you can hear the sirens outside my window, London. 
Okay, moving on to our next motion. Um, do we have any questions at this time? Also, I would like to take this time to clarify that only counselors and a few select individuals have speaking rights at this meeting. Do keep that in mind. Um, are seeing as there are no questions, we'll now move on to the debate period. Are there any points of debate at this time? Seeing there's no points of debate, head back over to turning point for this. And the motion carries unanimously. Okay, excellent. And we will now move proceed with the motion that was added to the agenda last week. I'm going to try to get that up on the screen right now, um, what the motion is. But in the meantime, uh, Councillor Kermack, if you would like to take 30 seconds to refresh on what this motion is, that would be appreciated. Uh, speaker, could I have more than 30 seconds? I had a little speech prepared. Um, it was short. You can have you can have a minute. Okay, I think I can do it in a minute. All right, I'll start now. Well, here we are again after a long and tiresome week. We're back here to debate and vote on this motion. I hope all councillors took the time to reach out to their constituents to hear their thoughts. I'm well aware that this motion may, might look different by the end of... Uh, by the end of the time we reach the end of the night. And uh, I welcome any amendment put forward that uh, will better represent the interests of, of uh, Western students. On a personal level, the past week has been nothing short of a nightmare and it's something I won't forget for years to come. Around Friday last week, I decided to take a break from USC business to focus on my own mental well-being. That was the right decision to make. I took the time for myself to breathe and work on other things in my life that I haven't had the time to do. After a few days of self-reflection, I was able to refocus myself in preparation for this meeting. I'm proud to report that I'm back to 100% and I'm ready to defend the interests of my constituents. But enough about me. As stated in the beginning, the, the motion is entirely for my constituents who voice their concerns and ask for change. We've all received countless emails at this point with constituents telling us which way to vote on this motion, and I'm sure we'll hear more of that tonight. Regardless of how the evening goes, I'm excited to finish this debate and put this motion to rest. I'm thankful for how respectful each and every counselor has been, and I'm truly looking forward to continuing to working with you uh, with this amazing group of people throughout the year. I'm looking forward to hearing your constituents' insights and looking forward to voting on the various amendments you may have. So um, and to answer speaker's question, uh, what the motion is about, it's or, the motion is for uh, um, uh, the USC to formally oppose um, Western's masking mandate. Read, 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 word for word. read a word for word. Yes. yes Whereas Western has announced a continued imposition of medical grade mask wearing within instructional spaces starting in September of 2022, whereas students have voiced their overwhelming opposition to the announcement, be resolved that the USC officially adopt a position of opposition to Western's continued mask mandate policy. Okay, thank you so much for that. Um, I have it up on the screen. Can I, are there any questions at this time? We're gonna have a 10 minute non-extendable question period. Can you zoom in a little bit? Yes, I can do that. Is that better? Thank you, perfect. Okay, awesome. Yes, please feel free to raise your Zoom hand or also message me, direct message me in the chat if you have any questions. Okay. Uh, yes, Councillor Mohan. Yeah, we, this is not a question that came up um, last week, but 
and if this motion passes, um, how do we expect the university to respond? Thanks for the question, Chris, and thank you for uh, thank you for all the work that you've done. I've I've been watching uh, you in Slack, and I I just want to say thank you for for everything, um, and all the work that you put into 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 your motion and and all and all this such. Um, to answer to answer that, uh, we don't know how Western's going to respond. I'm hoping that they will be uh, more uh, in favor with uh, with the students. But uh, we we just we don't know how they'll respond. Hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, we'll see some positive change. Okay. Are there any further questions at the, at this time? Yes, President Gardner. Hi, um, Peter. Do you think that this motion will have any effect on uh, advocacy points going forward with the university? I think it will. I think uh, it will prove that um, that we're willing to listen to um, our constituents, um, and I, I, I think that uh, it'll 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 really distinguish the USC with a uh, with administration as a as a uh, as a serious voice for students, even more so than we already are. I just want to add that, Councillor Dart. Hi, uh, thanks. Um, I just wanted to ask sort of a, <clears throat> a question based off of one of your points last week. You mentioned the mental health impact uh, that the mandate has. I just wanted to ask if you had taken the time to consider the potential mental health impact of uh, potentially going back online that um, may occur um, if the mask and vaccine mandate are uh, lifted. Yeah, of course, I've considered that, uh, and that would be horrible. Uh, I will, I will admit that. Um, but uh, I, I don't. I, a lot of medical experts. I, I can't quote any right now, but I, I'm. But they, they're out there. Um, they would agree that uh, that Western uh, that some universities um, have chosen, like have some universities have chosen a different position, and they will don't expect to go back online. I don't think we'd be going back online if this motion was approved. Um, obviously, no one wants that. Um, but thank you for your question. Uh, Councillor uh, Kitamisi. Uh, yeah, just want to add on what um, Councillor Gardner, President Gardner, um, has asked. Uh, so my question is in terms of timeline. So do you think that if this motion passes, do you think that the university is going to consider uh, changing their mandates beyond the October 1st deadline? And if yes, uh, is it not going to affect other advocacy priorities such as safety, which is at the center for every student? Um, and is it not going to take all our year for advocacy was like spending on advocating for this? I don't think it will. Uh... I have a feeling that this this motion will uh, blow over with the with admin, but I, I hope that um, I hope that we'll we'll be able to see some positive change out of it. I don't think it'll be an all year thing. I mean, I'm looking forward to this being done just as anyone else is. Um, I'm hoping that uh, by passing this motion, we will uh, prove as a as a student union that uh, that we're best we're we're there for the interests of students. Um, I'm just hoping that uh, you're right. We have to focus on other things as well. And I'm totally with you on that. Before coming in this meeting, I was just telling everyone that I knew, I can't wait for this to be over. I don't wanna do this anymore. I just want this motion to go through and or whatever happens to it, I just want it to be over. Um, and yes, I, I do, I, I do wanna get going with something else as well, as soon as we're done here. Okay. Uh, our next question will be from the chat. Um, the question is, what will the USC's next steps be if Western does not make any amendments to its current policy after this motion is passed? If this motion is passed, sorry. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Yep, if this motion is passed, what will the USC's next steps be if Western does not make any amendments to the current policy? 
if this motion doesn't pass, then it will prove that uh, that students aren't looking for what this motion is proposing. So we would be in the best interest of students. And that's uh, that's that's all that would happen. That's it. Sorry, I think I miss I misspoke. Um, if if this motion does pass and no amendments are made to the Western policy, what would the next steps be? I think we need to do more consultation to see what uh, what what students want to see is next. I don't have that answer off the top of my head. Uh, Councillor Turner. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I remember last time, Peter, you mentioned um, a little bit of qualitative feedback that you had received from your constituents about the masking mandate part of the policy. So I was wondering if you could recap us and maybe add to the types of qualitative feedback that you have received in opposition to the masking mandate part of the policy. When I took my mental health break last week, I, uh, I, I, I didn't focus so much on, on USC uh, related business. Um, and that was sort of diverted more towards my fellow counselors on the on uh, the Faculty of Social Science. Um, I got I got countless emails just as you did um, um, regarding regarding constituents concerns around masking. Um, and I don't I don't have anything new to add this week. Hope that answers your question. Councillor Dart. Um, I wanted to follow up and ask another question in regards to your thoughts on Brock University and Laurentian University now requiring masking and whether you feel that the addition of other academic institutions um, imposing a masking mandate um, changes your perspective given um, your comments on uh, a lack of support from other academic institutions. I'm going to be 100% honest. I didn't know that happened with Brock and Laurentian. Um, but if that's, uh, if, if that's the case, um, I, I understand that, you know, there is, uh, just as Dr. Silverman said last week, um, different institutions find different, come to different conclusions. Um, and uh, I personally think that uh, Western could be following with uh, the, with uh, the majority of, of universities. I recognize that the minority of, of uh, post-secondary institutions that are imposing greater restrictions, um, I recognize that, uh, you know, they have their own, they make their own choices um, and they do what's best for their um, community, but this is what I think is best for ours. Okay, thank you. Two points of order really quick. Um, these are the last two questions we are going to take, so don't bother I'm so sorry. I don't. I cannot take that question because we are about to run over, and I promised that it was not going to be an extendable to, uh, question period. Um, and also, the chat is closed. The only people that you can send messages are to are the hosts. So if you send a chat in the chat, everyone will not see them. And as well, you can't use that as a place uh, if you don't have speaking rights to speak. Just to clarify. And the only reason I would ever take a question from the chat is if a counselor with speaking rights. Um, was unable to speak out loud for a certain reason. Points of clarification. Um, President Gardner. Um, yeah, so uh, first question was, um, do you think it's a time sensitive uh, issue or do you think it's better to uh, go with the masking mandates until the five week policy is up and see how that affects the cases uh, specifically because uh, in US colleges, they're seeing a, a rise in cases during this um, students coming back? It's a great question. Uh, I'm just going entirely based off what my constituents wanted, and they are telling me that it's urgent. So that's why we I, I added this to the motion last week. They wanted it in here as soon as possible, so I delivered. And then our final question is from Councillor Morgan. Hi there. Um, my question is in, is in regards to um, potential plans if this does not get approved. Um, in regards to, um, I've noticed that a lot of the reach out that I've had from students um, are in regards to the exemption policy. Would you um, propose, I guess, in the future to look at that policy in regards to that, at least making it more accessible for students who, um, and being able to at least give them a choice when it comes to masking and vaccines? I'm willing to work on whatever 
whatever motion comes up in the future, yes. If if this motion in particular fails, uh, then that that would be the end of, of this. But I'm more than willing to work with you and with council on that that issue that you that you mentioned there. Okay, excellent. That very timely we uh, concludes the question period and from now we'll now move on to the debate period um are at this time are there any points of debate councillor morgan is your hand still raised from last time or okay got it all right are there no points of debate at this time um if there are none we can call to question then. Uh, speaker. Yes. At what point do, do uh, councillors make amendments? This is would be the time. Okay. Thank you. Am I good to open turning point? Yep. Looks like there are no points of debate. Okay. And then this is just a reminder for all proxies. Please send me your vote so I can count it as the portrayal. And also keep a record of your vote so that you can send it to us afterwards. I'm looking. Um, oh, sorry about. No, I was just saying there was a question. Um, I think we're a little bit confused about procedure, so I'm just going to explain really quick. Um, if amendments were to happen, they happen during the debate period. But we already passed the debate period where there were no amendments proposed, so we are now calling to question. So, please vote. I'm looking for two more votes on turning point. Bella. Yep. Um, I just need one second to do a quick calculation with the votes I received over DM. Yep, go ahead. Take your time. Okay. Okay, um, this motion fails. Um, and yes, this motion fails. And at this point, we I'm going to call a recess so we can get a few things together. Um, 
And then from there, we will move on to new business. So until 7.45, see you guys all then in eight minutes and 20, 31 seconds. Okay, in 10 seconds, uh, we are gonna close voting. Okay, we have unanimously in favor for adding this to new business. Uh, so from there, we are going to, if there's new business to be had after this, we'll revisit that at the time. So I see that. Um, uh, okay, so we're going to open this up. Um, to the, I have a spreadsheet or I have a document for this, one second. And uh, could I motivate, I guess? Sorry, say that again? Could I motivate the motion? Yeah, oh, you already have it. Oh, maybe not, okay. Uh, there we are. Um, zoom in. Okay. Uh, can I get a seconder for this? Yes. Councilor Osses. Okay, great. Uh, Councilor Mohan, you have the floor if you would like to speak. Yes, um, thank you folks for entertaining this motion. I'm um, bringing it to the floor on behalf of my constituents at the Ivy Business School. Um, my fellow Councilor Amal and I did a survey this week um, and we received over 500 responses, totaling up to um, just over a third of our student population. To be clear, the survey was only available to students with the ivy.ca email. Uh, what we found was that 55% of students were against the booster dose mandate. Another 20% was uh, had no opinion and the remaining quarter were supportive of the mandate and today we'll be um, representing that majority 55% of students. Um, so there are two clear concerns that we've heard from students, uh, the primary of which is that no other university has pursued this policy. Um, and so when students go in the news and look at commentary that Western stands alone in Canada, um, that has given them some level of pause. Um, and the second primary concern is around the continued necessity for the mandate. Uh, many students have reached out and they've acknowledged um, that need for the first two um, doses during the pandemic when we were dealing with alpha, beta and delta variants. Um, they understand that at that point in the pandemic, the, um, the vaccine mandate as a public health intervention was extremely effective um, because it prevented not only severe effects from the um, the virus, but also transmission. Um, but we've seen, and I've been kind of reading the news for the past few weeks, a few um, infectious disease experts have spoken out, and I can name a few, Dr. Martha Fulford um, from the University of McMaster, Dr. Uh, Chalgal. Um, and so what they've been, been saying is that, yes, the booster dose is very important for um, preventing severe outcomes from COVID-19, but the level that it prevents transmission um, no longer warrants a community level mandate. Um, and so we haven't heard specifics from Western as to why specifically the vaccine mandate isn't there. Um, and I think this has opened the door for a bit of confusion. So as a final point, like I do want to acknowledge that in this confusion, there are political actors and activists that kind of seek to make political hay of this. Um, whether it be stating that vaccines flat out don't work, that they're dangerous, um, or spreading conspiracy theories about a university. Um, that's, that's all bullshit, and I think we can all acknowledge that. Um, and so I hope we can have kind of a discussion or at least a vote um, on the core issue around the mandate for our students. 
Thank you. All right, are there any questions at this time? Uh, Councillor Mashwari. Yeah, I just want to clarify that there's nothing here about the mask mandate. Yes, that's correct. Um, so I put forward this motion as separate, um, just because, and especially in consultation with other counselors, we've been seeing that not everyone's aligned on both. Um, there are students who support one and not the other, and vice versa. So this one only um, looks at Western's uh, booster dose mandate. Councillor Turner. Hello. Okay, so you mentioned that you received a lot of quantitative feedback from your constituents, namely Ivy students. But I was wondering if you had any type of qualitative constituent feedback that you received in opposition of the vaccine mandate as proposed by Western. Yeah, so um, I guess those two points I described were the qualitative feedback. So um, students overwhelmingly said that Western stands alone. Um, they no longer felt, um, for the reasons I described, that the mandate was necessary. If I were to provide more color, um, students, and I think we all agree, were upset about um, the timing of the announcement. Um, but yeah, students were able to, to fill in, um, like, you know what I mean, further than whether they agree or disagree. And, and that's also kind of colored the way I've come forward with this motion. Okay, uh, Councillor Froop. Hi, I just wanted to ask if you were aware that UFT has the booster mandated for their residences. Sorry, uh, yes, I'm aware. Uh, Councillor Dart. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, and I apologize, I don't have a direct quote, but I believe Dr. Silverman last week mentioned that having um, potentially just masking without the vaccine wouldn't be enough considering the um, virality of the new strain of Omicron, um, as well as the likely spike in respiratory illnesses that typically come with the fall, such as other flu strains. I, I just wanted to ask how, um, you feel that, um, or if you feel that um, opposing the mask mandate, or sorry, uh, opposing the vaccine mandate, and if Western goes back against this, how this will impact, um, I guess, just COVID uh, impact on campus? Yeah, um, it's a tough one. And, and I want to stay true to um, re represent the, the core of what my constituents have been saying. Um, as we all know, like universities all came to different conclusions um, and there is no quote unquote, like way, right? Like public health is on a spectrum. So um, if, if I were to be completely honest, I do think if, if Western does not, um, if Western gets rid of the vaccine mandate, less students will get the vaccine. And as a result, um, when they do get COVID, they are more likely to get more sick. Um, so, that is what I think the impact will be. Um, but I think the concern is that because it's only about an individual outcome, as opposed to addressing community spread, the premise for a mandate is um, has less of a case. Uh, Councillor Nechtel. Hi, I just wanted to clarify, I think uh, Councillor Turner sort of brought it up, but I just wanted to get a bit more information. Um, when you were getting your feedback from students, I was wondering if there was um, any way to distinguish between why students were opposed to the vaccine, because um, I know I've heard a lot of students saying that um, they're concerned with the timing of this um, and how long that they have to, especially for first year students, to get um, the vaccine. And I was wondering if there was a difference between um, students who were outright opposed to the booster, um, regardless of any timeline, or students who were just opposed to it, given the um, somewhat short time frame from Western. Yeah, so I guess to summarize your question, like what portion of students who responded are particularly concerned about the timeline? Um, I, like, I don't have those numbers. Um, and I think that said only about half of students who responded 
provided further details. Um, so I think just to, to remain accurate, because I, I, you know what I mean, it's qualitative data. I, I'm not like a qualitative data analyst, but I think those key themes I described, um, the timing, but also um, the necessity, as well as the, what was my first point? The timing, the necessity, as well as Western standing alone in this policy. Those are the three things that I've been hearing. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Kitamisi. Um, yeah, Councillor Mon, thanks for bringing this up. Uh, my question is regarding, you know, the previous question, just adding on that. Um, because I caught it for what you said, uh, your constituents say that lack of information, like, like um, lack of reasons, uh, as well as the timing for, for, for this um, policy, that's the reasons why they are standing against the motion. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have thought about any, any ways uh, that the university can uh, bring these reasons to students as well as providing more information so they understand rather than opposing the mandates if this is the reason why they're bringing forward to uh, oppose the war mandate. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely agree. I think the university, um, and, and I, I think either way, I, I really hope Western administration um, comes out with more communications around its decisions. Um, I think a frustrating reality, especially when we're talking about public health, is that um, students and all of us consume media differently, right? Um, and so as a result, um, I think that's what's contributing to varying opinions on masking mandates and vac vaccine mandates. Um, and I think the one unified source that we all have is our own university. So absolutely, I think that's the place to start um, when it comes to providing more details to students. Councillor Turner. Hello again. In your Be It Resolve statement, you um, asked for the USC to officially adopt a position you know, realistically, or, you know, the way that if this ends up going through and the USC ends up making an impact, do you want them to strike it down entirely, amend it for it to be an optional act to get the booster, or for Western to extend the timeline to receive the booster? How exactly do you see that amendment going? start by saying this first I would I would recommend everyone get their booster dose um, and that's in line with Ontario's public health recommendation um, and so I think very obvious that Western should if they haven't had time to read the news today but like it's going to be important but the necessity for a mandate has been questioned by my constituents and so what can Western do I don't know how they're going to roll out policy but it's likely going to start with an extension of that deadline to get vaccinated for students who are on campus and potentially more consultation with students who have the most concerns um, with the mandate. So I, I think it's a great question, but I don't have the complete answer, but thank you. Okay, this will be the final question uh, without extension. Uh, Councillor Morgan, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I have two questions, um, that's okay. Um, my first question, one, okay. Can I, I'll make it one, but like two, like Loki. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess my question is in regards to what um, you said that you had received um, response from students within Ivy um, and with an Ivy email. And I was wondering, um, are these like current students or um, students in like that have graduated and move on as well as have you also considered looking into the um, exemptions and in regard to that and make it more accessible, at least try to meet halfway or compromise for those who can't um, or who are not in favor of the vaccine. Yeah, um, so to be precise, um, it is a Microsoft Office form that makes sure that you are signing in with an ivy.ca email. And the forum was distributed via our Instagram account, as well as a mass email to all current HBA students. Um, 
when it comes to like other details around um, exemptions, I, I'm going to be truthful. I haven't done that work. Um, and so that is what I have on the table, the, the current motion here. But thank you for the question. Okay, so if we want more questions, I'm going to need a motion to extend. And you can unmute yourself. I don't need to. I'll, I'll motion to extend. Okay, can I get a seconder for that? I'll I'll make sure I can second. All right, great. Um, hands down. And hmm. okay, are there? Raise your Zoom hand if there are any objections. Um, if you do not have voting rights, please do not raise your hand. I will have to look through all of these votes and I will know and I'll be upset. So please raise your Zoom hand if you have any obje objections to extending the debate period only if you are a voting member of council. Okay, seeing as there are no objections to this, this um, question period gets extended for another 10 minutes. Please raise your hand if you have any questions at this time. Starting with Councillor Dart, sorry about that. No problem, thank you. Um, I just, I guess framing the alternatives um, as they have been so popularly between the choice of uh, education and making like a personal medical decision. Um, I wanted to ask if you had considered the opposite side in terms of, again, the same choice between uh, pursuing an education and a personal medical um, choice uh, for those who are immunocompromised or um, rely on uh, the Western mandating uh, third booster, um, as well as any other um, COVID related safety implications that they've, uh, they've enacted. Yeah, um, and so I'm gonna focus on the vaccine um, simply because that's the motion at hand. Um, and and see, this is the problem with students, um, you know, debating public health measures. It's that neither, like none of us are experts, um, but I do think there are infectious disease experts and there's the ones I named earlier in the meeting who are saying that the Booster dose, while it does significantly prevent um, severe outcomes from those who do contract COVID-19, it does not prevent spread. And so when it comes to and like when it comes to the question of protecting our immunocompromised, um, masking is absolutely a public health intervention that prevents spread. Um, but what we are seeing is that the booster dose at least the one we currently have, um, does not do that same benefit for us. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, uh, Councillor Mashwari. Thank you. Um, yeah, my question for your consideration, Councillor Mohan, is um, regarding that the, you know, the Ontario government just job requirement for um, self-isolating after testing positive for COVID. Um, and I know this doesn't, maybe doesn't directly affect vaccination, but is that something in your consideration when we talk about like just the general protections that exist for us um, in preventing the spread of COVID? Yeah, there's there's been a lot of COVID news. Um, I also know that um, Health Canada is soon to be approving a new vaccine, which is very exciting. Um, but no, this this news from this morning or today has not been um, considered as part of this motion. Thank you. Okay, are there any further questions at this time? Seeing as there are no further questions, we can now move on to the debate period. At this point, this is where we would make amendments as well as if you want to speak in for, in favor of or against this motion, that would be the time. Yes, Councillor Chauhan. Sorry, I think I butchered your last name, but go ahead. No, it's okay. <clears throat> Sorry for my voice, but uh, hi, Councillor Mohan. Um, I was actually wondering if you would be open to an amendment maybe of changing the position from being against the COVID-19 booster dose mandate totally 
and maybe looking towards instead of trying to fight for a longer timeline for our students because from what I've seen from my constituency I haven't got much feedback about issues with the booster dose mandate but I understand that it's a it can be a bit tough to get that back to get the booster dose this quick before moving in and I think that's more of an achievable goal that council can bring up to work to the administration itself. It's alright if I respond to that chair right. Um, yes, it's alright. Thank you. Um, so I would say if, if I'm staying true to I guess the, the core of the concerns. Um, that would not be an ideal amendment. However, um, council is free to amend. Um, so I'll say that. Okay, that's so exciting. Our first amendment of the year. Bella. So what I'm yes. So sorry to interrupt, but the motion that I'll be presenting later this evening does talk about an extended grace period. So I'm not sure if we want to amend this and then go to my motion but that is also something that's covered in my motion. So I'm not sure if it would be fruitful to amend this one because we could always amend mine since that's the basis of the second part of it. Hmm. I just thought I'd throw and that out there. Okay, thank you for throwing that out there, but procedurally we are okay. going to proceed with this amendment. Okay, amazing. Okay, can the... <laughs> so, this was our first USC amendment of the year. Uh, can I hear from the amender exactly what words we want to change? Like point me to where, so I can put it up on the screen so we can talk about it. Um, so and also, sorry, uh, really quick, second or first. Oh. Anyone? It, it dies if there's no seconder, so keep that in mind. Councilor Maheshwari, I can second. Okay. Uh, yes. What are we looking at? Um, so I was thinking the part where it says the US, USC officially adopts a position against the West, Western's COVID-19 booster dose mandate. We could change it to the USC officially adopts a, a position to um, would it be correct if I say fight or um, pursue a an extension to the booster dose mandate um, timeline? Would those be the correct words? Okay. Did everyone hear and understand that? Send that those send the what you want it to say in chat to me, and I'll put it yes. up. In the meantime, we'll do questions. Ah, ooh, tough. Tough. Okay, we're actually, yeah, send it to me in the chat and then. Um, I think. Oh, no, is, is, is that? Oh, shoot, you can't copy and paste Zoom chats. Did you know that? I just found that out. Uh, if I can interrupt, <laughs> you want some... I've put it Sorry? in, if I can interrupt, I've put it in the, um, in the agenda doc. So you should be able okay. to copy and paste from there. One, give me half a second. Do, do, do. Sorry, the agenda doc? Oh, see it. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Okay, we can now move on to questions at this time. If there are any questions, please raise your Zoom hand. And remember, this is specifically about the amendment to the motion, because we're going to return to the debate period of the original motion eventually. Mm. Is it OK if I uh, add like a few, because uh, it says adopt a position, I was just going to say to pursue, just to clear it up a little bit, because reading it like this is a little bit of can be a bit confusion. Thank you for that. All right, are there any questions? Point of order. Point yeah, of order. go ahead. Do we not need to vote on the amendment or? 
we sorry okay i'll explain procedurally what we're doing right now yeah so this is the original motion as it cur what you're seeing right now what i scrolled up to is the original motion and right now we are having a question period followed by a debate period about the amendment and then we will vote on whether we want to include this amendment in the original motion thank you uh, yeah so we're in a question period to return to the debate period of the original whether it gets passed or not uh, Councillor Osis. My question, um, along with my debate on this, so my question for Just Council question for now. Okay, question. is do you think this is a replacement for the issue of international students who have already been double, triple vaccinated um, and are being asked to receive another vaccine, although they already have it, but it's not recognized by Health Canada? I don't think this is a replacement for that. I actually did not know too much about what the international situation was. But um, if that's something that council wants to look into as well, I'm open to that. Councilor Turner. Um, do you know, or just like have an estimate as to what you would like the new timeline to look like? Would it just be for the students and residents or would this apply you know, to the rest of the student body as well, because we know that the rest of the student body has until October 1st to get their booster, whereas students and residents are only given a two week grace period. So just wondering if you had like an idea of what you'd like that timeline to look like. I think that this mainly applies to first year students, but if we are getting complaints from current students as well, I think we could also extend the timeline for that. But I think that USC should fight for the students coming into residence this year, especially. Okay, are there any further questions at this time? Seeing as there are no further questions, we'll move on to the debate period. Again, this is just on the amendment. If you have a debate about the um, motion as a whole, please hold it at this time. Councillor Turner, go ahead. All right, so my debate comment is twofold. I think firstly, the amendment is too far away from the original motion such that it's almost a new motion. So I think it may be good to look at in isolation. The next thing I'll say is that, as I previously stated, the motion that I will be presenting later this evening does cover this exact topic. So I mean, voting on it twice is totally fine with me. And I provide more specific outlines as in terms of guidelines and I'd love for you know comments on that um, and I will be providing a second part of that motion as well that addresses transparency understanding and communication on the part of Western admin I just wanted to make that comment so that everyone knows that this will probably be addressed again tonight so um, yeah that's everything Councillor Mohan yeah I, I share um, Councillor Turner's sentiments um, I do feel like it's, it also in effect avoids the question. Um, so I would much rather prefer um, we kill this amendment and we have a more like fulsome discussion on Council Turner's motion. Okay, and Council Oslis. Yeah, to reiterate the same sentiment, I think this doesn't really address the issues that constituents have brought forward. Um, while timing is an issue that we see in the whereas uh, requirement was announced on August 22nd, a week after our inter undergraduate tuition payments were due, like I mentioned last week. Um, however, I don't think this, is, this addresses constituent issues about, you know, the core problems that surround the vaccine mandate, and this is a bit far from the original position. Okay, thank you. Are there any further points of debate at this time? Okay, excellent. Seeing as there are none, everyone who is a voting member head back to the doc that we voted on for new business, and it is column C that we are voting under. The column is called Mohan Motion Amendment. Please vote there for the amendment to this motion. Reminder that we are returning to the original motion after this. Um, vote, no matter what the um, result is. And reminder, proxies also fill in your Excel spreadsheet 
for your proxy. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to now close uh, voting for this, this motion, or sorry, this amendment is stricken and we'll proceed with the original motion as that it was originally brought up. And now we are re-entering the debate period for the motion as it appears on your screen right now. Uh, are there any further points of debate or amendments to be made? Uh, Councillor Maheshwari. Thank you. Um, so this isn't strictly like just about the vaccine part of this mandate, but I do want to add that I think we need to think about this holistically, um, the protections that are supposed to exist uh, other than vaccination. Uh, I mean, like I know masking is on for now, but like if we are looking to if we're looking at an opposition to masking, um, I do think that there's a need to protect ourselves holistically, um, protect like immunocompromised students, students that may have had allergic reactions to the vaccine, um, as well as a points raised before about international students um, having received um, two or more doses and being required to uh, redose with, um, I believe, and I, I, I can't quote any scientific study at the moment, but I believe there is also uh, some level of uncertainty about how um, these uh, vaccines not approved by Health Canada react with ones that do. So I think that there's a lot of content here um, for us to consider, uh, but yeah, in a, in a holistic sense and not just, um, just about the vaccination part of the mandate and how that um, is going to affect us. So thank you. Councillor John. Councillor John. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so I will be speaking against this motion. First of all, um, Councillor um, Mohan, I really appreciate the work you've done in consulting your constituents. That's a really Im impressive amount of feedback that you've gotten. Um, so I really appreciate that in the short amount of time. Um, I just think when it comes to student safety, it is not so much about the majority, um, but about those that are most at risk and vulnerable to the subject at hand. Um, so I totally understand the concerns um, from the large group of I IV constituents and all the constituents at Western are all our constituents at Western, quite frankly. Um, but I don't think that risk is really fully understandable if, until it's experienced. And I know there are a countless amount of students and faculty and staff um, who are immunocompromised, who rely on such precautions to feel safe at school and to simply attend class. And I think that these mandates are largely for them. And we got information from Dr. Silverman last week that this does in fact make a difference. Um, so yeah, I'll just be voting against this motion for those people. Councillor Osos. Okay, uh, are there any further points of debate at this time? Seeing as there are none, uh, we'll now call to question. Head over back to the Excel sheet that you just used to vote um, and cast your vote on the motion as a whole. It's, it'll be in uh, column D.
Okay, uh, I'm now closing voting, so stop playing around with the Excel spreadsheet. Anna, can you tabulate or do you want me to? Yep, I'm trying to do it. Just no one else touched the sheet now so I can keep it at one spot. <laughs> Just, yeah, you can, we can, we can lock that. Okay, and am I good to announce those? Or are we still waiting? Okay, so this motion also fails with, ooh, if you wanna give me a minute, I can do the math. Give me a with 53% of voters opposed. Okay, so we are going to move back to our next pieces of new business, but before I do that really quick, I would like to take the second to announce the percents for our previous vote, the one we had before the recess. So if everyone is listening, we had 36% in favor of the motion, 53% opposed to the motion, and 5% abstain. If that, okay. All right, is there any further new business? Councillor Turner. I'd like to put forth my motion, um, which is a new motion for the COVID-19 policy as we've been addressing here tonight and in our private prior meeting. Okay, I will put that up in a second. Councillor Turner is the mover. Can I get a seconder on this? Councillor Mohan, I'll second. Okay, excellent. Let me get it up. Okay, this, oh, that is the motion. It is a little bit, oh, sorry, I didn't realize there's a seconder already. That's okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I will let, this is again on the adoption of this motion as new business. This is not about the motion yet. Um, are there any questions on the adoption of this motion as new business? All right, if there are no questions, then can I get, um, are there any points of debate at this time? Seeing as there are no points of debate, please head over to the Expel Excel spreadsheet and in column E is when you're where you're going to be voting on whether you would like to adopt this motion as new business tonight. Okay, closing vote now. This motion is unanimously adopted as new business. From here, we can now move on to the actual motion itself. Uh, Councillor Turner, you have the floor if you'd like to speak on this. 
Thank you, Bella. And thank you, everyone, for uh, giving me the time to speak on this motion. My name is Sydney Turner, and I'm the president of Arts and Humanities. I put together this motion in consultation with a lot of counselors, particularly my counterpart, Counselor Lynn, who is the Arts and Humanities counselor on the USC. I'm going to read through both parts of this motion as there are two parts, and I will entertain questions and debates after that. So the first part of this motion is pertaining to transparency and communication by Western administration. Whereas there has been consistent feedback from multiple constituencies that Western's COVID-19 policy announcement was late and without warning. Whereas Western's COVID-19 policy announcement has harmed students' mental health and has jeopardized their trust in Western administration. Whereas students have reported feeling ill-informed as to why the mandates have been introduced as Western administration has not provided sufficient information explaining their consultations, the scientific evidence that supports their decision, and how they ultimately came to their decision. Whereas the USC has an obligation to support students and keep them sufficiently informed about Western related events, policies and initiatives. Be it resolved that the USC releases a statement outlining why the third dose of the COVID-19 vaccine is necessary, given the direction of health experts, such as Dr. Mike Silverman. Be it resolved that the USC advocates for clearer and more transparent communication from Western administration about this and other policy decisions that impact the student population at large. Be it further resolved that the USC releases a statement highlighting and or condemning the lack of transparency and consideration that Western administration put into this policy decision. Be it resolved that the USC advocates for student leaders being consulted in some capacity when Western makes policy decisions in the future, especially ones that affect the student population at large. Be it resolved finally that the USC encourages Western administration to provide clear parameters for student with exceptions and or exemptions and make necessary and sufficient accommodations for them. So quite frankly, this um, part of the motion pertains to transparency and communication on the part of Western admin. Um, we have had a difficult time coming to a consensus on our part as arts and humanities. Students have been all over the board with their feedback, opinions, and sentiments regarding both parts of the mandate policy. But one consensus that we have been able to draw is that students feel ill-informed and that the Western administration has not been transparent or clear enough as to why this po these policies have been implemented and you know the necessity of them. We as counselors are privileged in being able to provide to have been provided with that information by doc, Dr. Mike Silverman, and obviously in consultation with others, if you have had the opportunity to do that. And I think it is the USC's obligation to provide that transparency when Western admin fails to do so. The second part of this pertains to the COVID-19 policy itself, which I kind of hinted at earlier tonight. Whereas, according to Western's COVID-19 policy, students moving into residence will be given a two-week grace period to become fully vaccinated, three doses as outlined by Western, be it resolved that the USC releases a statement that encourages Western administration to extend the grace period to 30 days from the day the policy was released. This would mean that students in residence would have until Wednesday, September 21st, 2022, in order to obtain full vaccination status three doses as outlined by Western. So as we've seen here tonight and probably through your own consultations, this period is quite short and I believe um, is not informed as much as it could be. We don't know where the grace period starts. Does it start when students move into residence or does it start from the beginning of the day that the announcement was made? Um, there's a lot of ambiguity in that and I want to rectify that. I think Western adm admins um, lateness in their announcement can be rectified at least in part by extending this deadline so students can have the ability to access vaccine clinics once they're here on campus if they were unable to obtain a vaccine um, in their hometown and so students can focus on settling and adjusting to university life and enjoying their o week and now open to any questions Ben, thank you for allowing me to speak okay are there any questions at this time Uh, Councillor Kitamisi. Um, yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor Tena. I just wanted to ask if uh, there's a possibility to put this motion maybe in the chats or uh, on Slack because um, I'm 
not yet understanding the wall motion. Um, I would be willing to post the link or if Melissa or Bella would be able to post it in the general chat, that would work for me, but. Uh, it's that... also in the agenda document. So if you go all the way down to the bottom of the motions, I've added it in there. And I'm just uh, formatting. I just have to make a formatting change so that it's formatted properly, but you'll see it all uh, right on the agenda doc that you would have found the link for the meeting on. Thank you, Melissa. Um, sorry, where was I? Uh, Councillor Oslis. My question pertains to exemptions, um, especially the question I asked earlier about the international issue of students being double or triple vaccinated with vaccines that are not approved by Health Canada. Is there anything you have to address that? Um, as I believe that's consistent constituent feedback that people are having issues with not only what I mentioned with international students, but also other exemptions. Do you have anything um, in here that addresses that or is that something you're open to in an amendment? Yes, I do have stuff that addresses that, but I do wanna say first and foremost, thank you for bringing that um, constituent feedback forward. I know a lot of us have not really received that feedback. So it's really great to have that added in, you know, our thought processes. But I obviously have not had the capacity to consult with Western administration and see exactly what they do in terms of exemptions for international students in that regard. But I would love to, if I were to per, able to pursue this further, speak with them because I can't provide a fulsome answer for you, but I would love to advocate for that and hopefully work so that Western admin could provide exemptions for them if it was safe and healthy to do so. But I can provide you the information that I have in terms of exemptions and exceptions. So when I put that clause together, I wanted it to include students who cannot receive their booster according to the timeline outlined by Western as they just received their second dose. And for those of you who don't know, you must wait a 90 day grace period in order to receive another dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. So some students I've heard have just received their second dose so that they can attend school, but can't get their third dose for another 90 days. So exemptions or exceptions will be made or should be made for those students if I'm in the power to have those exemptions made so that those students can get their vaccine later than the October 1st deadline. This also includes students who need to obtain medical documentation to prove that they medically cannot become fully vaccinated. Three doses as outlined by Western. This is quite obvious. I know that there has been a lot of students discussing how they are unable to obtain vaccines due to their medical status. So it's important that they obtain proof of that so that Western can make the proper exemption, but obtaining medical documentation takes time and they may not be able to obtain that documentation um, before the deadline established by Western. Um, this also includes immunocompromised students, students who cannot mask due to respiratory deficiencies, et cetera, and a huge um, student concern is a lack of transparency and access to all available information, and in consultation with my constituents, it is evident that this is a primary factor motivating students in opposition of the mandates, so that's another thing I really wanted to include is the exemption and exception piece because students don't have access to the information of how I will be exempt, if I can be exempt, what are the parameters surrounding exemptions, and how do I seek one. So hopefully us urging at Western Admin can at least point them to say, you know what, we need to be a little clearer on the exemption protocol and process. Hopefully that answers that question. I apologize that I don't have a fulsome answer in terms of the international student concern, but I would love to consult with Western and work towards getting that clearer. Thank you. President Gardner. Um, yeah, I was going to say, uh, would you be open to extending the grace period until after the um, five week review is um, takes place? I think I would be. The one thing I will say is that students and residents are in closer quarters. So I understand why Western wanted them to be fully vaccinated as soon as they moved in. But the issue with that is that they provided their announcement on October 22nd, and that does not provide students sufficient time to get vaccinated. And I understand that a two week grace period helps, but I wanted to provide 30 days so that students can get settled in, enjoy a week, and then 
in that two week to three week period after a week, they could get their vaccine. And I think that does provide sufficient time for students to make an appointment and actually receive their vaccine. I would be open, open to amending that, but I think that I would require further consultation with health experts. I know that when we talked to Dr. Mike Silverman and I asked if it would be okay if Western revisited the vaccine mandate after the five week period after Thanksgiving and just had a masking period. And he said that that would not be sufficient to reduce the risk of transmission and contraction. I, based on that advice, I would say that it wouldn't be in the best interest of students. But if there's any proof that it could be healthy, then I would definitely be open to that. Okay, uh, Councillor Vader Shamai. Thank you, uh, Councillor Turner. A uh, remark I got in, uh, consistently in the feedback from the Faculty of Ed was more so in terms of the transparency piece regarding that it seemed like a lot of people were hearing through the community about the new policies um, before they were hearing through the university, given that we have a relatively small faculty. I'm just curious whether in the topic of transparency that came up in the feedback you were getting from your constituents that it wasn't that students as major stakeholders in the university weren't receiving information through the university before hearing through other channels such as social media and things like that. So you were sorry, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding the question correctly. Your students were concerned that they heard it through social media before they heard it from Western directly. Yes, I'm just curious, given that I represent a fairly small faculty, whether that came up in any of the feedback you were receiving that it just that people felt they weren't hearing it from the university before in, in more public forums. I don't think I heard that directly. But one thing I will say is that immediately after this announcement was made on Instagram, a lot of students reached out, whether that be in a group chat format or one on one. And I think a motivation for that was the fact that it was on social media before it was sent to students in more of a policy format. And I know that for myself, that was something that concerned me, but I don't think that that was a primary source of feedback based on my constituents, but I do think that it motivated a lot of people's anger or confusion because it doesn't seem like the proper format to release a policy, but it wasn't something that I heard directly but I guess what I'm saying is that I could infer that that was a possibility. Uh, Councillor Sriharan. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Turner, for putting this all together. It's very thorough. I clearly understand what you're trying to get across. Um, my question isn't so much about what you've written in your motion, but um, why you kind of have it all together, I think you're talking about two pretty big and broad topics between transparency and, you know, the specifics of the vaccine mandate. And I understand why um, they are connected, but I do think that these two topics could potentially be voted on separately. Um, so I was just wondering if you had any rationale for why it's all together. Yeah, so my rationale, well, it, there's multiple parts to it, but I think that the fact that there was a lack of transparency and there was a significant lateness to the policies announcement can be remedied at least in part by Western extending the grace period. So I think that the two arguments lead into one another. I also know that we've been discussing the COVID-19 policy at length for two weeks now. And I think that this remedy could remedy um, student concerns like all together. So the reason I put them together was because I think that this motion could accomplish what we've been trying to get at for the last little while. I know that it's quite different from opposing openly the vaccine or the mask mandate portion, but I think that what we'll be doing is appealing to the general consensus of all students, namely that this was a late announcement and also namely that there was a lack of transparency and communication and also understanding on the part of Western. So I would be open to amending it for them to be separate motions if that it feels necessary. And if you don't feel you'd vote the same way on both, I'd definitely be open to that. But the reason I put them together was because they seem to A, lead on to one another and B, they're pertaining to the same issue, maybe just different sides of it. 
Uh, can I get a motion to extend the question period? I'll, I'll motion it, I'll move it. Okay, thank you. And uh, can I get a seconder for that, please? Unless... All right, if there's not a seconder, then we do not extend the question period. Can I second it, okay. Robert, or is that? From there, we will now move on. Sorry, yes. I think we have a seconder. Sorry? Yes, Sydney, you can. Okay, uh, hands down, please. Please raise your Zoom hand if you are in opposition to extending the question period for 10 extra minutes. Okay, seeing as there are no objection, we will extend. Uh, Councillor Kitamisi, I believe you are next. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Uh, my question is uh, just in addition to what um, Councillor Sharam um, has said, um, I believe that this motion is divided. Uh, is in, in two parts. And that's because we are also, I believe that we are missing other things such as, for example, like from my constituents, I've been hearing a lot of lack of information. Uh, for example, like if a student uh, beyond 1st of October um, hasn't yet submitted their booster, are they going to be expelled? Uh, you know, such information that we need to also know from the university and that can be part of the transparency part. Um, and so like, if we can also consider those uh, questions, if we are to represent all students. Was there a question or should I, like, I mean, yeah. I, so I, I ask if you are still open to uh, amend to split the two. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm, as I, yeah, as I said, I'm open to amending it into two motions, if that would make um, counselors feel better or in any capacity, I'd be willing to separate the two motions. I just wanted to do it for consistency and ease sake, but I definitely understand the concerns about them being separate. So that was something I took into consideration when I drafted the motion itself. So thank you for bringing that up. Councillor Morgan. Hi, thank you. Um, one, I just want to say, Councillor Turner, um, this motion is well written, and um, I appreciate that, um, and they're well detailed. Uh, so thank you. Um, my question, um, before I actually start the question, I have, in regards to um, feedback from my end on, on at Kings, um, we've received um, feedback in regards to. Once the, they get a vaccine, students get vaccine, they're worried about the after effects for, um, for them regarding that. Um, and, I was, um, and a lot of them are felt, feel threatened from, I guess, when they do have to get it um, with the emails that they get from Western, as well as they, um, they feel that the, once they do have an exam that, um, it's a long process and it's draining with the requirements to take two vac um, tests a week. And I was wondering if you have anything in regards to what the exemption um, or if you are open to adding that or looking into it to how we can better um, have more accessibility when we, if we do um, like when we do have exemptions for the vaccines. Um, in terms of exemptions, I think, let me just pull this up. But um, the students that need to obtain medical documentation to prove that they medically cannot receive the vaccine, I think that will be the extent of exemptions in that regard or regarding what you've said. Um, I think logically that would be the extent of it, at least if I'm looking from the perspective of, of Western administration, I think it's incredibly difficult for anyone to predict how they will react to the vaccine. I myself, I don't like to disclose my immunocompromised status, but I am immunocompromised. And it was hard for me to predict how I would react. And I think that the communal benefit of receiving the vaccine may at this point weigh over, like outweigh um, the 
potential side effects, but I would, uh, that's just, this is why I want to extend the deadline so that students can consult with medical professionals if they are confused or concerned so that they can get proper advisement. And then if they do need to go through that exemption process, they can do so. I do understand that the exemption process is entirely um, draining and it may not be conducive to, you know, students learning or mental health. However, I do think that as we've heard from Dr. Mike Silverman and other infectious disease experts, that the vaccine is going to significantly decrease the transmission and contraction of the newer and more popular Omicron strains, BA4 and BA5. So in terms of exemptions, I think that that would be the extent of it. But I think students should consult with their medical professionals, especially if they received two doses and reacted poorly to two doses, which is something that I heard in constituent feedback and see if they could be exempt from a third dose, but I believe they'd have to have medical documentation in order to prove that. Just for clarification, if I'm able to, um, I was wondering if there is an exemption in regards to religion um, other than doctor's note, because I know that's a huge, another um, thing as well. I think there's a lack of clarity on that. So I'd love to, that's why this clause was included is to, in, to increase the parameters or the transparency in the parameters of that and see if Western will comment on whether religious or ideological exemptions can be made. I, I think in terms of this vaccine, they won't be, but I do not want to quote Western on that because I cannot. And that is me just speculating based on their reaction or lack thereof from what has you know percolated over the past two weeks but um i don't know and that's why i want there to be increased transparency in the parameters of exemptions and exceptions thank you okay awesome are there any further questions at this time if there are no further questions we'll now move on to the debate period uh any comments in favor, against, or amendments would be made at this time. Council Morgan, is that left over from last time? Okay. Okay, if there are no points of the debate or amendment, Councilor Dodd. You're muted, sorry. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, just kind of reiterating what everybody's already said, I think um, I just want to thank Councilor Turner for um, bringing forward such a well thought out and, um, you know, well written um, um, motion to the floor. Um, uh, Councilor Jung and I both uh, are, you know, advocating for on the behalf of music students and from our feedback research that we got from reaching out to constituents um, on both sides of, um, you know, how they felt about Western's COVID policy. There was, even the people who did agree with um, what Western wanted still had some pause and some confusion over, um, you know, just the timeline of this and the transparency. Um, and I think, so, so for those reasons, I think this is, um, a super positive and um, could be a, a really good thing to introduce from the USC, just kind of um, making sure that transparency is our number one priority a lot of the times. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add that from our feedback, um, although it swayed in different ways, the one consensus, like you said, was that um, the confusion around the information that was released and the transparency was the number one issue. So thank you for this. Okay, if there are no further points of debate at this time, please head over back to the Excel spreadsheet where the cell where, or the column that we're using is F.
sorry about that. Voting is now closed. If you would give me one second to announce the results. It, okay, this motion passes unanimously. Anna, can you back me up on that real quick? Yeah, I'm just looking through where I look good. Okay, great. This motion passes unanimously. Please feel free to have a little Zoom round of applause. Okay, excellent. Okay, back to, is there any further new business at the time? I swear there was. Okay. Sorry. That's there is yep. uh, that new business. Thanks. Bella. Um it's can I pass my speaker might suggest to propose new business or do I have to do that? Just say that Jess needs like two, three minutes Jess to present needs, something. Jess needs two or three minutes to present something. Is that sorry, is that the new business, the presentation? Uh yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Understood. Understood. Uh President Gardner's are Move around this. Can I get a seconder for that? Councilor for this Mohan. presentation? Councilor Councilor Mohan. Mohan. Oh. Okay. Uh, can I see Zoom hands in Zoom if we have any opposition to having this presentation? Okay. As there are no objections, uh, Councilor, or sorry, not Councilor, BP look. Hi everyone, thanks. I know it's been a long night, so I'm just gonna keep it short and simple. Um, we just wanna bring forward something as the exec um, about Consent Awareness Week advocacy. This is something that was not originally in our roadmap and the USC doesn't um, have a stance on it. So I'm just here to provide some context and give you a little bit of a heads up. So there's a lot of conversation right now about advocating for Consent Awareness Week to be officially recognized by the provincial government. And this is something that as exec, we feel like is a good piece of advocacy and something that we want to support. So so um, here's some more context. That would be Consent Awareness Week would happen during the third week of September. And some of you may have already seen campaign materials related to it, but there's going to be a lot of advocacy about that topic in September. And so I wanted to give a bit of context for that and give a heads up because we may be facilitating an email vote in the upcoming weeks about whether or not the USC should move forward with advocacy on this initiative. So. Um, I think Bella and I will be connecting further and doing an email vote because it is a bit of a time sensitive issue since Consent Awareness Week would be the third week of September. So yeah, if you have any questions at all, I don't know if we get a question period during um, for discussion, but as always, my inbox is open at externalaffairs at westernusc.ca. And that's it for me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Moving back to our slides. Is there any further new business at this time? Yes, one more piece. I promise we're almost done. Go ahead. Uh, can I give Lauren a presentation for two minutes? Okay, uh, President Gardner is you move on this. Can I get a seconder? Councilor Mohan. Awesome. Zoom Thank hands you. if we are in opposition to adding that. Mm, actually, I'm so sorry, guys. We're going back to the Excel. Uh, so, uh, column G. New business three, please. Okay, I'm closing vote. Um, we unanimously are adding this to new business. The Go ahead. Sorry to find the unmute. Thank you, everybody. Um, just very quickly, I again, you know, want to reiterate and thank you all for the work that you've done in regards to consultations with students. I know that it's something that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and certainly capacity and it can be really straining. So I wanted to make sure that, or the executives in particular, wanted to make sure that you all were aware of the resources that are available to you if you do need any mental health support or just support going forward, you know, as the year goes on. So I'll read them out really quickly and briefly for you. And then I'll also send them in the chat so you have access to them. So I'm gonna kind of list them in order of accessibility if that's all right with you. 
Um, so first and foremost, My Wellness. So if you're on the student health plan, you can access My Wellness platform uh, on the Purple Care website um, that has both virtual support and counseling. Um, there's also a really great section there on wellness resources within the community as well, if that's something you prefer. Second, um, you do have counseling up to $750 per benefit year if you're on the health insurance um, that the USC provides for students, or that USC facilitates for students, rather. So that includes psychologists, social workers, or psychotherapists. So you have that as well. And then we also have um, a program through the USC directly that we can help facilitate if you need a different level of support, a different kind of support. Um, but I just wanted to kind of make sure that you were all aware of those options. And again, I'll send a more detailed message just so you have that um, on file. If you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out to any of the executives. Um, you know where to find us or DM us on Slack or anything. And again, just thank you all so much for the effort. Um, you all did tremendously well and your efforts do not go unnoticed. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, is there any further new business? Okay. Thoughts? Would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? Or are we going to adjourn? Council Kermak. Okay. I, I like the initiative. Um, are there any objections in any way? That's the reconvening time's not accurate. I'm so sorry. Okay, as there are no objections, this meeting is adjourned. Please stay behind if you have any questions, comments, or concerns for me. Thanks, everyone.